And so we've been talking about loss and grief. We're in a season where it has hit. I think every part of the world, really, there is so much loss because of this pandemic. Coronavirus has really just been something else. So many people have lost uh, their loved ones and uh, jobs and their livelihood and all that. Now, there are different stages of loss and grief which is what I want us to be looking at today with Pastor Caro, who is a psychologist. And so we're going to be looking at that to unpack it well so that you can understand exactly where you are. And the first thing that happens is denial. When somebody goes through loss and grief, the first thing is denial. Like, it cannot happen to me. No, it's not possible. And so Pastor Caro, when yes. you unpack that now as, as, as a psychologist in psychology, what is that? This is the first stage of the grieving process. And like you've said, it's a process and uh, it is not something that you will wake up and just heal from it. It's even for you to get to the stage where you have failed, where you have healed and you are whole, you, t you have to go through this process. So the first stage when someone gets the bad news that you've just lost somebody, you've lost a, a loved one, is denial. That's why you find someone saying, I can't believe it. Mm. That's the first reaction. I can't believe this cannot happen. How? How did it happen? And you get into that stage because you cannot comprehend how this even this person has died. Right. These are things that maybe you always thought it is it happens to other people. Not you. But it has never, it cannot happen to you. And so when you are given the news that you've lost a loved one, you, you get into denial. Uh -uh. You're like, no. Happen. And that's why the first thing, most of the time, people just stand and like, no. And it, they refuse. It, yeah, they refuse. No, completely it can't. It and can't. Completely. Yes. Yeah. You get into that denial, and also it. it that's at that stage, you you you. It it helps you. Um, it's like it it it's like a shock absorber. A coping mechanism. Yes. Yes. Something at that particular. That you build around yes, you. Yes. Yes. To be, be able to even try to accommodate or to make accommodate sense. the pain, and and because you you the inner you cannot handle that that level of pain. So it becomes like the shock absorber. Mm, to so deny. Like, yeah. It no, 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 no. It can't. It's not happening. Because maybe you've seen the, the pain that people that have lost loved ones go through. So you're like this. Mm -mm. I can't take it. Yes. Unconsciously, you don't want wow. to take it. You don't want to, you don't want to experience it. So you're in denial. Mm. Like, no, it can't be. Mm. It, it can't be. So yes. this is the first stage. But it is sad that some people stay in it for long. And, and that is a taboo. So it's okay to start there. Yes, it's but, okay to start there. But don't prolong but it don't and don't there. end there. Yes. The other stage I want us to look at mm -hmm. is anger. Yes. People get angry. Mm -hmm. And they get angry even at God. Yes. The one, your sustainer, your helper. Yes. The one who can actually get you out of the mess. Yes. But you're angry at God. You get so angry because if God was there, why did he allow it? I had somebody say, out of all husbands... Why couldn't he go to, to, to India? <laughs> and pick one. Yeah. Why would he come to my small village and pick my own husband? Why yes. couldn't he go to... I'm telling you. Somebody even said Peru. Why couldn't he go to Peru? We, he, there are so many men there. He just found mine. You know? Yes. And they oh get so God. angry. The person gets so angry. So the minute you come from the denial stage, yeah. you now it's like reality is starting to come in. And so you get so angry angry you get so angry at yourself you like what could i have done to stop it so you feel that you might have been a reason for that loss and are you angry even at people around you You get angry at people around you you get angry at the dead person why did you leave me i was i was with uh, a lady mm -hmm. and we went to see her husband in hospital yes only to discover he had just died the way she slapped him Whoa. <laughs> i was with her personally this is not being told <laughs> She slapped him and asked him, how dare you leave me? Get back. You must come back. How yes. dare you leave me? Yes. We did not make this pact. Yes. We didn't agree that you're yes. going to do that. Yes. So that is still a part of loss and grief. Yes. She was angry. Yes. 
So anger, people may get angry at and different upset. Yes, and you can get angry at so many things. You can get angry if it is an accident, you'll get angry at drivers, you'll get angry at the person who caused it. If the person has been in hospital, you'll be angry at the doctors. Mm. I think you should have done better. I think you you just did not pay enough attention to my husband or to this my child. Negligence. This is negligence. You get so angry. And you know, most of the time, especially as Christians, mm. we want to tell people that are going through this stage, no, 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 it's okay. You don't tell God that. But I tell people, God is a very secure God. Yeah. He's okay. He's, He's okay. fine. Vent it yeah. because he understands that mm. pain you're going through. And the safest place to vent your anger is to God. Yeah. He understands he because understands. That's the, at the end of the day, that's where your, your healing will come right. from. Right. That's where your healing will come from. So I know Christians, um, we want the person to move on. It's okay. God is going to take care. Especially when this person now starts acting up and you're like, I thought you were born again. I thought you're a believer. That's not the way we are supposed to talk. But let the person be, because even if they don't vent that anger at that particular time, three years down the line, they will vent it out. Mm. Yes. So they might as well do it then. So the when best time ready. it's when it's raw. Right. Yes. Let the person vent. Let the person shout. Let the person scream. And God is okay. Yes, and God is fine. Let them blame God. Let them ask God, where were you? If Jesus Himself at the cross. Mm -hmm. He got to this place and asked God, even you. Yeah. He knew yeah. he had to go through the cross. Yeah. But at that point of death, yes. he asked God, yeah. how can you forsake me? How? Jesus was 100% God. So what about us? So we need to stop judging people, no, yeah. especially when they're going through the process mm -hmm. of the, the, the different stages of grief. Right. We need to understand and be there for them at each stage. So when the person is waking up and they're angry, it's okay. Let them be. Amen. Because they're not supposed to stick there for long. But the more you try and stop the process, the longer it takes, the longer it takes for the person to no heal. No wonder God says that yes. he's touched by the feelings of, of our, our infirmities. infirmities. But don't stay in that anger. Don't stay. Don't stay in that stage. Yes. Remember, every stage is a stage. Yes. And stage is there for you to do what you need to do and then leave. Mm -hmm. The third stage is bargaining. Yes. So you lose a job. You start bargaining with God. If you give me back this job, mm. I'm telling you I will tithe. Yes. <laughs> if you're a believer, <laughs> from now, I'm telling you, me, I'll tithe 20%. Mm. I won't even tithe 10%. Yes. I will be tithing 20 You start bargaining. Yes. If I, okay, if I, if I do this, if, mm. if you bring this person back to life, mm. I will do ABC. Yes. Oh, I will, I will, I will, I will mm. bargaining. Yes. Or you, you're, uh, borrowing for time. Yes. And asking him all yes. manner of things. Yes. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it becomes the defense mechanism because you don't want to experience that pain. So you're like, I think if, if they resuscitate him, I think he'll come back to life. If I only pray enough, God is going to bring me back this person to life. Because the pain of loss is painful. It's unexplainable. It's beyond. It's beyond. So... This becomes your defense mechanism because you don't want to come to the reality of this pain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the, the, the psychological aspect of a man can't bear this pain. It is too painful. It's beyond. That's when at that particular time you're experiencing so much emotions. They are different. You, you think you're confused. You are numb. You feel like God hates you. So at this particular time, you're like, okay, let me try and numb it. Okay, can we negotiate with God? Can we reason with God? Okay, if, what if I do this? Would you give me back this mm. job? What if I... I'll, I, pray, more. I'll pray more. I yeah. promise you, God, if you just... Even I'll go to church. Yes. Yeah. I will pray more. Yeah. All I'm asking for yeah. is, let's talk. I'll be saved. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and sometimes people feel, maybe, especially if they lose a loved one, maybe who was in hospital, yeah. they feel like, okay, maybe the doctors didn't do good enough. Yeah. Okay, or maybe they gave him an overdose. So there's a lot. But at that particular time, because of that beginning, you feel like you are at ease. So it's a, it's a moment where you feel, it gives you You're that moment. You're still running yes. from the real yes. grief. Yes. The real issue has not hit. It has not hit you nicely. The, the, the fourth stage, we get on to depression. Yes. And this is a very dangerous place. Yes. And you see, that's the time. At this particular time, you're coming in terms with the loss. Mm. And... We say in psychology, it's okay to get there, but don't stay there. This should be your shortest stage. 
you need to move and you need to move fast. And that is why we tell people, if you have lost a loved one, if you have gone through any form of loss, please see someone to help you. Because at that Thank particular you. time, you don't know what to do. Yeah. You can't even understand yourself. Yeah. So you find maybe after the burial or after things look like they're going back to normal, that's when reality hits that I'm coming home and I'm not finding my husband. Yeah. I'm not, I'm coming home, I'm not finding my child. Oh, I'm, I'm making calls to my mother, she's not there. Yeah. You know, there's all that. Yeah. So it starts sinking in. The reality becomes now, you, you know, you're not, you're not in touch. And at times you can't handle that. So when someone is at this stage, it is very important mm. for that person to get help. I was telling somebody, we were talking with a friend, and I was telling them the same way when a woman gets to that stage where she's giving, she, she's, she's ready to give birth. Even if she has given birth to 10 children, she will still need to go to a midwife. You know? To help this, yes. So when you're going through loss and grief, mm -hmm. just go to a professional. Yeah. So people are not even professional, mm -hmm. but they are diagnosing you mm -hmm. and telling you you, you yeah. are mad. Yes. You are depressed. Yes. You have you seen mental issues. You have yes. seen. You have done. So giving you really, and that's very very bad. Mm -hmm. People need to seek professional professional help. help because if you seek, you go to the doctor. Yes. If you have mental issues like now grief, yes. loss and grief, yes. go to a counselor. Yes. Sit down with a professional counselor. Yes. And walk through the journey. Yes. Mm. Because it's a sickness. It's an illness. That's the reason why you're feeling that pain. Mm. So mm. if you go to someone and ask them, how do I handle this? They will tell you, they'll give you formulas. Fast 17 times in a year. Mm. Uh, oh, go and burn your husband's clothes. People have relocate. all kinds. Relocate. She's from that house. Yes. Yeah. But you're not a professional. And just maybe if something worked for you, might not work for the other person. Everyone experiences grief in a different way. Right. And they express it in a different way. So let them see a, a, yes, a, let them a, see a professional exactly. so they can be told exactly mm -hmm. how to do it. Yes, because you find, where, especially when people now start getting to this stage of depression, you find if the person was an extrovert, mm. they become withdrawn. Oh. So they want to spend time alone. alone. They're just out of touch with the world. Isolated. Yes, they isolate themselves. So if the person was an introvert, they become talkative. So they talk, they want to relate with, they want to come and visit you, they want to know how you're doing. And that's not them. And that's not them. So only a professional will be able to pick it. Because they'll be able to look at this person and say, yes. ah, this is not normal. Yes. Uh -huh. And the last stage is acceptance. Yes. So it is very, very, very important mm -hmm. for everybody, no matter who, yes. to come to this stage of acceptance. of acceptance. Yes. And just because you've gotten to the stage of acceptance, it doesn't mean that the pain of the loss is gone. But you have already developed coping mechanisms. Mm. So you know it's okay. Yeah. I'll never see this person again. Yeah. But I, I'm ready to move on. Yeah. I'm ready to cope with the new norm. Because if this is someone who had a husband and now has lost the husband, you, you have to learn to cope without your husband. Mm. You have to learn to cope without that job. So this is the best stage. And at the end of the day, this is the destination of the For process. All. For all. For all. You must get to the point of acceptance yes. and saying, yes, it happened. Yes. I actually lost my job. Yes. Or lost my spouse. Yes. Or lost my child. Yes. Or lost this and that and the other. Yes. Or even a phone. Yes. There are people who lose their phone and they go through grief. They have any form of loss. Yeah. Any form of loss. And it is very important for the for for a family that maybe is experienced this, get to that stage. Yeah. Whereby, and one way we can tell that the person has gone into acceptance is that even as they talk about it, the pain is not that much. Mm. Maybe they're even laughing about yeah. it and joking. Yeah. Now the stages mm -hmm. can also go from acceptance all the yes. way. It's to like anger. a cycle. It's a, a cycle. It's like a cycle. So just be aware. And just because you've gotten to acceptance doesn't mean it's over. Sometimes you'll be at the beginning stage. The next day you wake up, you're in denial. So you just need to be, the people around that person need to understand at what point are they? What do I need to apply at this particular time when they are in denial? Sometimes they wake up and they, they, the person is not encouraging the rest. It's okay. God is going to see us through. So you're like, wow, the person has gone wow. into acceptance. Yeah. But 
after two days they are depressed. They're angry. Where was God? Yes. Why did could he allow this to yeah. happen? So the, 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 this person needs a lot of support, emotional support, and for the people around this person to understand. To understand. To Just understand. walk with them. Just walk with them. And there is no period. There is no specified time, timeline for the person to grieve. Mm. There are people who it's very fast and they're able to get to acceptance and they, they move on in life. There are people that it takes longer, but you cannot judge the person. The same way in a delivery room or in, a, in the maternity, there are people who will labor for 10 hours. Another one's one hour. And another one, one hour. God and another don't them. even experience. God bless their heart. <laughs> And another one doesn't even experience the pain. It's like yeah. they coughed out the baby. So just understand the yeah. process is very different for each person. For each person. For each person. And so you who's working with the person, mm -hmm. understand them. Understand them. And just walk with them Just at that walk time. with them. Don't judge them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they will say things that can even irritate you. Sometimes they even chase you. They're like, I don't even want to ever see you. Please don't even ever come to my house. Don't take Ooh. it seriously. Don't take it seriously. They're not themselves, especially when people are grieving because different people react differently. Mm -hmm. You'll find in a family, there's this person who just goes wild and they're screaming and all that. There are others, they're like the sober ones in the family. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't mean they're strong. It's just that their way of expressing their grief is it's very different. different. Even in communities. Some it, even are told, like mm -hmm. now there's a lady <laughs> who was going through hell because she was told, you, your husband died and you and didn't, didn't cry. cry. You killed him. Yes. You think we don't know this yes. thing, say? You, yes. Meanwhile, it's just her way of grieving. Yeah. That's different. Yes. She doesn't have to be shouty and, mm -hmm. and weepy, but she's grieving probably even harder yes. than the rest of the yes. people. So people need to understand that. Yes. And not judge them harshly. Exactly. Because they can't cry like you. Yeah. You know? Yes. Or they can over cry. Yes. Mm. And you know, uh, I've come to know that our different cultures will influence how we mourn or how we grieve. That's why you see the laws, they have to sing, they have to even hire mourners. They are uh, professional mourners, way. but that's their way. Just respect it. Yeah. Because it's not working for you. Just leave them because our culture informs a lot about us. Yeah. It has great influence on who we are today. There are others, they just want to be alone. They want to be, it's cool and quiet. So yeah. when someone is shouting, they're wondering what's up. Yeah. So, but doesn't mean that they don't have feelings. They are also feeling as yes. much. Yes. So let people mourn the way they need to yes. mourn and grief and the yes. way they need to. Okay, uh, uh, Pastor Caro. Now the question is, mm -hmm. How do we now, you know, get over the process mm -hmm. and start a, a new life? How we get over? And uh, just before we go there, I think the, 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 the most crucial part is who surrounds this person. Because they become the support system. Who is the support system of this person that has gone through loss? It's unfortunate that most of the time when someone loses a loved one, uh, has lost a loved one, um, the people are there during the mourning period, but after the funeral, the, pers the, the, goes. the person is gone. Yeah. So the, the healing process is also determined by how much support this person gets. And even if you are really not a professional, if you are a supporter or you are, uh, 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 you are there to stand with the person, it's very important to know some of those things that you need to do and some things that you don't need to do mm. because it will affect how long this person will stay there mm. or how long or how fast they will heal. Mm. So even as we, we get to know how, you know, how is it that I get to the healing process and all that, for the people that are sub the support system, it is important to know mm. when to speak. And when not to speak. And when not to speak. I'm also told that the things people say are very yes. important. Like uh, Nora was saying, uh -huh. you know, that... Uh, uh, people will come and say, you know, the Bible says, mm -hmm. uh, you know, this mm -hmm. and that and the other. You know, uh, Job, he mm -hmm. also went he also to lost. loss. Mm -hmm. He lost all his work. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you need to see so and so. You need yes. So all manner of things. Yes. What should somebody do? The first thing, please or don't do. Please first don't give ideas to the person. Your presence will speak louder than your words. Just being there. Because this person at this particular time, even then they can't understand what has just happened. So just be there. Don't talk. You don't have to talk. Others, they'll come in like, hey, Ati, what happened? So this person that is going through the loss has to keep repeating the same story. Mm. Keep repeating the same story. Mm. So just be there. Don't talk. Just your presence will play a very big part in how 
this person is going to hear. Mm. And also you need to understand that this, the people are grieving differently. So don't expect what you've seen with another friend is exactly what this person should be going through. Like you're saying, sometimes when the person doesn't cry or moan and people start saying, oh, you're the reason why your husband mm. died mm. and all that, they expect this person to moan. Even with the different cultures, I believe there are some laws who don't, really have that drama yeah yeah because yeah. we are all different yeah. our personalities our 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 our, 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 our 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 the way we have been brought up yeah. is very very different so you need to understand that the, this person is very different from any other mm. and also understand that this is a process it is not a one time you're not wondering the third day this person is back to denial and you're asking them Kwani wewe? up and down hey. what is it yeah. Mm. No, 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 no. Understand that it is a process. Mm. And people get to uh, accept, get to acceptance at different times. So don't hurry the person. Don't hurry the person. Let them be. Take yes. their time until yes. they heal and until get delivered they heal. completely. And another thing, do not minimize someone's loss. Mm. For example, if someone has lost a great grandmother. And they're like, huh? At how old was what? she? At she 97. I... Yeah. 97, let her relax. <laughs> yes. You're actually belittling. <laughs> you, yeah, you're minimizing this person's loss. And loss is loss. Mm. Or maybe a child has lost a pet. And this child is mourning. And you're there. Sasa, paka ndio inakufanya ulia hivi. You know? I'm a umbo. I'm a toy in my break. Don't minimize someone's loss. Because they'll get confused. Why am I feeling the way I'm feeling? And, and I'm it's told just a cut. So you can actually change them into yes. something else. Yes. Because they'll think, oh, I'm not supposed to feel the way I'm feeling. Um, yeah. And yet they're rightfully mourning. Exactly. So don't minimize someone's loss. Another loss that unfortunately we really minimize is miscarriages. Mm. When a person mm. has miscarried yeah. and we assume after all the baby had not been born. Yes. So why are you mourning? Yeah. So let the person mourn. Let me tell you, I, I personally have gone through it mm -hmm. and it was the most painful, yes. traumatic time. Yes. And I feel like nobody could understand. Me. Yes. Until the doctor said to me that you, it's actually a mourning mm -hmm. as if your child has died. Yes. So it's the same it's the level same. of mourning. It's the same. Yeah, so, it's, so it should not be minimized It should at not all. be Min minimized. Miscarriage is just as good as losing a child. Yes. And you see, for a mother, they connect with the children from the womb. Yeah. The world out there will connect with the child when they are born. Mm. But for a mother, even if that baby was one week old, yeah. still a loss. You've connected. Yes, you've yeah. already connected. So yeah. we need not to, minim to, mm. to minimize that loss. And there are things that we should not say, mm. especially for us Christians, when we go to support people that are mourning. When you go and tell someone, don't worry, it's God's will. The first person is asking, will, will. How can God will like this? Will, how? Yeah. <laughs> you know, those are statements you need to av avoid. Mm -hmm. And don't also tell the person, you know, he's in a better place. Maybe this person was going through a chronic illness. And you're like, oh, God has given him rest. What rest? He's dancing with angels. He's, he's dancing with angels, uh. you know. <laughs> and you're trying to tell him he's in a better place. Uh. Some even quote Job. Eh? He's the God that gives and he's the God that takes. And what you don't understand is that Job was in depression mm. at this particular time. Yes. So he's not saying because it is thou says the Lord. No, he's very he's depressed. He's very depressed. Yeah. So now you're looking for scriptures to just make this person feel like, mm. no, why are you mm. crying? Why mm. are you crying about this? So we need to know exactly what we are supposed to say because your words can add the pain or your words can be used to heal. To heal the person. So you need to be very, very careful. Mm. And sometimes when, um, after the burial, so the people come and ask you, so what are you planning to do after this? Mm. What are your thoughts about? Very bad. Very bad. Because what, what, what can you even plan after the yes. funeral? At this particular time. You're still time, in disbelief. Yes. Yeah. At this particular time, you don't even know what's going on. You're yet to really come to terms that you have lost a loved one. So you're not in your ment in, the, in the proper mental the state mental capacity to, to make decisions. To be able to make we are talking about loss and grief. We are in a season right now where loss and grief is all over with so many people. Perhaps you have friends who are going through it right now. Mm -hmm. Perhaps you have family who are, you know, your family itself is going through that and you're 
in a lost place. You don't even know whether you're coming, going, or gone. You're really, really low. We came for you today. Yes. To let you know there is hope. There is hope. Yes. I'm telling you, there is hope. And at the end of it all, God, who is able, is going to help you. And he's going to uphold you with his righteous right hand. Amen. And ensure that you come out strong. So don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. Yes. Yes, yes Pastor Caro. And uh, so for the person that is, has gone through the loss, one thing that you need to do so that you're able to even aid yourself to get to that stage of acceptance is acknowledge the pain. Yeah. Don't, don't bind it. Don't it. Don't um, think, oh, these are demons. No, no, no. Just acknowledge it. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. And God understands. And don't try to play strong yes. for other people so that they can think, yes. wow. Yes. This person. No. No. If you need to cry in the midnight cry. hour, if you need to cry where people, in the presence of people, mm -hmm. whether you're in a matatu, in a mm. home, cry. Just cry. Acknowledge. Acknowledge. Be in the reality of that pain. And also understand that the, the grief can also trigger other emotions. Mm. Because maybe you are this cool person, but all of a sudden you are angry. You're shouting. So it can easily trigger other emotions. Just be aware of it. So when you see you're even going overboard with some of you, your emotions are really not balancing as mm. they should, mm. please seek help. Because it can be uh, as a result of what you have gone through. Maybe mm. the traumatic experience you've been through or the loss. And also you need to understand that the process is also unique to you. Mm. So don't go to the to guys and ask them, how did you overcome? Because their process was different Very from yours. Very different. Very wow. different. Yeah. Because you don't go to look for tools. Seven ways mm. of, of coming out. Yes. Just know what works for you know what works for you and understanding that it's a process so it's something that takes some time we really help you a lot instead so, of feeling terrible yes. that you're ba feeling bad again yes just yes, go yes. through the process just go through the process bad good yes go you're through laughing, the process you're crying yes you're enjoying today and tomorrow, tomorrow you're you wondering why you, you want to see anyone yeah yes mm. understand it's a process and the process is very unique to you mm. also Take care of yourself because most of the time, we people that are going through loss, they get carried away by this whole thing that has just happened. Mm. So it's very easy. You just discover today I've not showered, I've not eaten, I've not, eaten. I've not uh, done what I need to do. My hair is I've not slept. I've not slept. Mm -hmm. mm. So you need to take care. Be very cautious that and ensure that you're taking care of yourself and also know the difference between grief and depression mm -hmm. because wow that's very you need important. to know yeah the difference between grief and depression because depression you stay low it because it's a mood disorder yeah so when you get depression you're low it you 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 you, you can notice for two weeks you're not happy at you're not all. happy yeah you're you sad sleep. yeah you're sad you've withdrawn from people you sleep a lot you sleep a lot or don't sleep at yes. all yes Nothing moves you. At some point you feel like, this person, I should have just died with the person. So you need to understand and to differentiate. And like I've said, because the, the process is unique to you. Mm. Only you can tell. Mm. Ah, at this point, I think so I'm getting very, into depression. be very, very alert. Be, be aware. Be very, very alert. Cognitive. Yes. That something is not correct. Behavior. I'm angry. Yes. Uh, and then I'm sad now. Yes. I'm in this dark place mm -hmm. that I'm not able to come out of. Yes. So that you can perhaps tell somebody. Mm -hmm. I need help. I need help. Yeah. yeah. I, I dealt with a case of, um, of a lady that had gone through as a nasty separation. Mm. And uh, for her, she felt she had moved on and she was okay. And I just picked that she, she's extrovert, so she became an introvert. She started withdrawing, so she would not come to church. And one time I called him and I said, what's up? I haven't seen you for the last few weeks. Like, I just have fatigue. So she had sunk in depression, but we were not aware. So I was like, no, this is not you. I asked, how many hours do you sleep? 
So she told me, oh, in fact, nowadays I have such a workload in the office. When I get home, the first thing I want to do is to nap for two hours before anything. So the two hours end up to be four hours. And in the morning, she wakes up so tired. So I want to see you. Just come. So she said, I want to do some tests. Let's, let's just do some tests with you. And it was sad. She was in severe, not mild. Depression. Severe depression By that the she time. needed to be on medication. By the time she was yes. seeing me. And for her, she's think, she thinks that it's workload. But because it's not workload. I've moved on. Mm. It's okay, I've moved on. Mm. It's no workload. Because the work that you've been doing in the past, you've not, your boss hasn't added you work. It's so the it's, same. It's the same. But all of a sudden, you feel you're so tired. You can't function in the office. You see two clients and you want to sleep. So know the difference between depression grief and, and depression. Grief. Yes. Because sometimes you can easily fall into the depression. So we just talked about the stages of grief. Yes. And now you know what grief is. Mm -hmm. Depression is where now you have sunk you have so sunk. low yeah. that everything around you is just dark and you don't want anything to do with anyone. Yes. You're running away from reality, yes. even from yourself. Mm -hmm. You don't sleep. You don't groom. Mm. You don't take care of yourself at all. Yes. You don't eat well. You even you change how you dress. Or you overeat. Yes. You change how you dress, how yes. you look. How you look, you don't want makeup anymore and you're fine. You dress not your age anymore. Yes. You're so unconscious. You don't even notice it. Wow. You don't even notice it. There's some wow. who just go, they shave their hair. Yeah. That's my new hairstyle. But that's not you. If you notice severe changes after loss, you need to see a professional. Because then you could be yes. very well depressed. You could be very depressed. And... Um, you need to understand something, all of you that are watching, that you don't have to get to that stage. Mm -hmm. No, you don't have to get to that stage of depression. Yes. You need to catch it. Mm -hmm. Catch it here. When yes. you start to feel sad, withdrawn, alone, not a care in the world, that's the time to wake up and really yes. seek help mm -hmm. before you get now onto medicine. Some people get onto medicine and they never stop. Yes. For the rest of their lives. Mm. So why wait until you now get so far away and you didn't have to? Mm. So this is the time. If you feel that you're just sad, 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 you don't, you're not happy, you don't want to see anyone or anything because of uh, loss and grief, please seek attention, mm. seek help, mm. seek help. Yes. And you can call the numbers on this screen right now. You can call those numbers. Yes. Somebody's going to attend to you. Yes. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be alone. And you know, it's, it's unfortunate that there are people that have gone through loss and grief that since nobody noticed when they got into depression, right now they're in Madare. Right now they're dealing with crazy things. You just wake up and... This but person is, is a mental hospital yeah, here in Kenya. Yeah, you, mm. this person is no longer the same. I, I was told of a story of this lady who used to work in town. So she one time entered a matatu and she was a, a pastor's wife. Mm. And she went and never knew her name by the time she was getting to Kencom. And she doesn't know what's going on. So she's very well dressed. So she sat at the clock. She sat there, so everyone is asking her because how she's dressed and the things she's doing. Are they are too make, they different. Make, and do you know she had lost her father six years before then? So she didn't mourn at that time. She never mourned, so she had bottled this, uh, this grief. She snapped. The next thing, she doesn't know her name. So her bosses in the office are wondering, why hasn't she arrived at work? At home, she left home. But nobody knows. No one knows her name. No one knows. She doesn't know even her own name. Wow. So for two days, she was missing. Two days. Because she can't tell who she is. And now she had to be put on medication. And it doesn't have to get there. It doesn't have to get there. It doesn't have to get there. Mm. Just see a professional. And please, like mom, you have said, don't go for to quacks. Let me call them quads yeah. because everyone seems to to know to have, to, to to have, have an medication for you. <laughs> 
the same way you will not go to your neighbor's house for the your neighbor to help you give birth. Yeah. <laughs> you have to look for a midwife, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. So the same thing, we need to have a professional help you go through the pain. And yeah. counseling is not there to remove the pain, but to aid you in the process. Right. And even to help you to see. Yes. Because sometimes you don't you don't see. Yes. And sometimes you don't really have like you need a reality check mm -hmm. of where you are mm -hmm. at the moment yes so that you can be able to get help mm. to get out yes of, of that situation yes wow pastor caro this is amazing it is i totally believe that nobody needs to stay in that mm. situation yeah if you're going through loss and grief mm. you know exactly what to do mm -hmm. and like i said again call those numbers this is woman without limit no, no. Without